Welcome back to my series where I teach you how to build a quadcopter and configure it all the way from a pile of parts on the bench to a finished quadcopter ready to take out and fly. And in this series, we are putting iNav on this quadcopter, my very first iNav tutorial too. Um, in this video, we're going to go through some of the first steps of setting up iNav, setting up the mixer, setting up the motor outputs, and I installed the ESC upside down when I did the original tutorial. And I'll be damned if I'm going to take this all apart again, desolder all the motors, and flip the ESC back over again. So I'm going to show you how to reorder the motors when you install the ESC wrong using iNav. It's not as easy as it is on Betaflight. Not that the Betaflight way is particularly easy either. I'm Joshua Bardwell. You're going to learn something today. After flashing the flight controller, iNav is going to ask what kind of aircraft we're flying. Unlike Betaflight, which just assumes you're flying a quadcopter, and probably you are, iNav is designed to work with all kinds of different aircraft, quadcopters, airplanes, lots of other things. So we're going to choose mini quad with three to seven inch propellers. And the next thing we're going to want to do is go to... Oh. <laughs> Then it's going to reboot. <laughs> the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the Mixer tab. And in the Mixer tab, we are going to tell iNav what motors our aircraft has. Is it an airplane with just like a single motor? Is it a quadcopter with four motors or something else? And iNav has preset for us that our platform type is a multi-rotor and that the Mixer preset is Quad X or a quadcopter with four motors in an X configuration, which is correct for our quadcopter. But these presets aren't loaded yet. We're going to hit load and apply and we'll get this uh, warning, which doesn't yet. We'll hit save and reboot. Doesn't matter. We're setting up from scratch. So there's nothing to overwrite. At this part, we run into a problem because when I showed you how to install the ESC, I installed the ESC upside down. And I'd love to tell you that I did that specifically so I could then show you how to fix the problem that creates. It is a good learning opportunity, but I actually just didn't realize I was installing it upside down. But that's a good thing because a lot of times you're going to run into a situation where for one reason or another, you don't install the ESC or the flight controller in the orientation that the manufacturer assumes you would. Maybe you want to rotate it 90 degrees or maybe you want to flip it over. And that's what we've done here. This is a case where iNav is going to be a little bit more frustrating to deal with than Betaflight because Betaflight supports a function called resource remapping. So you can see right here, we've got the four motor outputs on the flight controller, signal one, two, three, and four, and they are assigned to motor one, two, three, and four. And here are motors one, two, three, and four in their positions, back, right, front, right, etc. And if this were beta flight, we could just rearrange these and say, well, you know what? S1 isn't motor one, it's motor three, and life would go on. But iNav doesn't support that function. Remember I talked earlier in the previous part about how there's only so much memory on the chip to hold the code and some features just don't fit. Some stuff has to be left out. iNav has GPS-based functionality. Betaflight doesn't. Betaflight has resource remapping. iNav doesn't. So there is a workaround for this, but it's a little bit more tedious than with Betaflight. So we are going to need to reorder the motors, but before we can do that, we're going to need to double check which motor position is where. And in order to do that, we're going to need to spin the motors. So we're going to go from the mixer tab to the outputs tab and set up the motor protocol. Now, by default, iNav doesn't enable the motor protocol output when you first start up because like with servos, if you were to send signal to the servos and it wasn't within the desired range, you could damage the servos. So if you try to spin the motors right now, nothing will happen. And in fact, if I take a battery and plug in the quadcopter, you'll only hear those first three sets of beeps. An ESC, a, B, a BL Heli ESC, when it first powers up, will go do do do, do do, and and the second two beeps or the last two beeps mean that the flight controller has sent motor signal to the ESC. The fact that we are only hearing the first three beeps and not the last two means the ESC is not seeing any motor protocol, any motor signal from the uh, flight controller. 
Here's how we're going to fix that. We're going to set the ESC protocol to DSHOT. Let's do DSHOT 300. I think that's a good one for this flight controller. We are going to set the servo refresh rate. Doesn't matter. We don't have any servos on this quadcopter. If we had an airplane with servos, this might matter. And we are going to enable motor and servo output. And then down in the lower right, we are going to save and reboot. And now, if I plug in my battery, I do get all of the tones, meaning we have motor output. And if I check this box, I understand the risks. Props are removed, and your props should be removed right now. Don't check that box if they're not. That will let me raise these sliders, and when I do that, the motors will begin to spin. Like so. Now what I need to do is I need to raise the motor sliders one, two, three, four, and make note of which motor position begins to spin one, two, three, four. And I'm just going to do that with a handy dandy spreadsheet. So we'll face the quadcopter forward. We're facing forward. And so this is the back right position. That would be motor number one. When I raise slider number one, position number three begins to spin. I'm going to raise slider number two. Position number four begins to spin. I'm going to raise slider number three. Position number one begins to spin. And we should assume that when we raise slider number four, position number two will begin to spin, but never make assumptions. Let's just double check. Okay, position number two begins to spin. Before we leave this page, there's one setting I also want you to change, and that is the motor's idle power percent. Um, the percent, that this is how low the motors will be allowed to go. And the problem is if this value is too low, the motor will stutter and even stall, and then the quadcopter will fall out of the air. If you've ever driven a manual shift vehicle, think about what happens if you are in too high of a gear and you just let it slow down, it, and then the engine stalls. Now this idle power is 15%, which is much higher the beta flight default is 5.5% and we know that's fine because we've flown this on 5% 5% idle with no problem. I'm tempted to lower this percent because maybe this is built for like some kind of a GPS quad which needs a higher idle and this is more of a freestyle quad but then again maybe we should leave this at default and then fly the quad and just see what happens. I think that's what I'm going to do, but I'd like you to kind of make a mental note, and I'm going to make a mental note that for a typical freestyle quad, this number would be down closer to around 4 to 6 percent, and, and the reason that's important is because the motor's idling at a lower value means that when you lower the throttle, the quad falls faster, and when the quad is upside down because you're doing some kind of an inverted trick, it stays up in the air longer because the motors are not pulling it down. So for freestyle quads, you usually want this to be much lower. You never run it at 15%. But we're going to leave this for now. Maybe we'll come back and change it later. So now we come back to the mixer tab and we're going to sort out our motor order problem. And the way we're going to do this is by rearranging the mixer assignments for the individual motors. So we can't just tell the flight controller motor number one is actually motor number three. What we need to do is we need to tell the flight controller which direction each motor is pushing. That's what the mixer tells it. The mixer tells the flight controller that the motors on the right-hand side of the quad, when you speed them up, they make the quad roll to the left. And the motors on the left-hand side of the quad, when you speed them up, they make the quad roll to the right and so forth. They tell the flight controller which motor to spin to make the quad move in a particular way. And if this is not right and you try and fly the quad, it will, the best case scenario is it kind of goes and shuts down because it detects that something isn't right. That's called runaway protection, or sometimes they call it anti-Taz, like, you know, the Tasmanian devil from the old Looney Tunes cartoons because he would spin and sometimes when the quadcopter's mixer is not right, it'll spin like that. So they call it anti-TAS protection or runaway prevention. The worst case scenario is that the quadcopter just f spins and flies into the air and tries to fly away. So we really want to get this right. And what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to rearrange these lines to be correct 
for how the motor layout is. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a screen grab of the original settings so that if I screw them up, I can get them back. And then what I need to do is I need to rearrange these to match the slider and position here. So slider number one, which is motor number one, is actually position number three. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the values from row number three and move them to row number one. Now the throttle value we can ignore because the throttle value is one for all of the motors. So the roll value for number three is one. I'm going to move that to, put to row number one. The pitch value for number three is one. Okay. And the yaw value for number three is negative one. Okay. So now we have moved row three up to row number one. Let's keep going. Motor number two is in position number four. So we're going to take the values from row number four and move them to row number two. Row number four, roll is one. Pitch is negative one. And yaw is negative one. Motor number three is actually in position one. So we're going to take the values from row number one and move them to row number three. For roll, row number one is negative one. We're going to move that to row number three. For pitch, row number one is one. We're going to move that to row number three. That's already what it is. And for yaw, row number one is negative one. We're going to move that to row number three. And finally, Motor number four is in position two, so we're going to take the values from row number two and move them to row number four. Roll is negative one. Pitch is negative one. And yaw is one. Row number four, one. Now before we proceed, we can sanity check these numbers to see if we've made any obvious mistakes. The final check will be that we fly the quad, and if it flies, then we did it right, and if it flips out, then we did it wrong. But a basic sanity check you can do is that for each column, there should be two ones and two negative ones. Because if you think about it, for each axis, roll, pitch, and yaw, there are two motors that pull the quad one way and two motors that pull the quad the other way. Pitch forward is the front two motors, no, the back two motors. Pitch, pitch backward is the front two motors, and so on. And we can see that our sanity check passes on the roll axis, one, one, minus one, minus one. On the pitch axis, one, one, minus one, minus one. But on the yaw axis, we have a mistake, clearly, because we've got three minus ones and one positive one, and that cannot be correct. So we're going to go back and check and see where I've made a mistake. Motor number one is in position three. So we, the value from three, which is a one, should go up to row number one. Well, that's that's the mistake. Motor three has a positive one. Yeah, that. let's just continue and double check the rest of the values to be sure, but I think that was the mistake. Motor number two is in position four. So the value from row four should go to row two. That's a negative one should be in row two. That's correct. Motor number three is in position one. So the value from row one should be in row three. That's a negative one. That is correct. And motor number four is in position two. So the value from row two, which is a one, should be in position four. That is correct. OK, now we will hit Save and Reboot. And if you're thinking to yourself, that was a lot of complicated BS with lots of room for, thank you, lots of room for making mistakes. And wouldn't it be simpler to just be able to say motor number one is in position four and let the freaking flight controller handle it all? That's why Betaflight's resource remapping is so freaking powerful. But I sh you could just freaking flip the ESC over and install it correctly in the first place and save yourself all the hassle. And that's what most people who build this quadcopter do. But now you know how to remap these motors if you ever need to. Learning is fun. Now, if we go back to the outputs tab here, there's a challenge we're going to have to deal with, and that is that there's no way to actually check that we've done it right, short of 
flying the quad. With Betaflight resource remapping, you can come back here and you can raise the sliders up and down again and you can see if they're spinning the right direction. But we can't do that because none th nothing that we did actually told the flight controller that motor one had moved. So motor one is still gonna spin the wrong position and that's just something we're gonna have to deal with. So then let's just double check the motor direction um, now this is probably going to be correct because we reset the motor direction when we set it up for BL Heli or for Betaflight, but let's just double check the motor direction. And what we're going to need to do is look at this diagram here and verify that each of the motors in this position is spinning in the correct direction. Now, hold on. We're going to need to verify that the motors in this position are spinning the correct direction. Don't pay attention to the motor number. It's not that motor number one, which actually is in position number three. That's not, the, the back right motor needs to be spinning uh, count, uh, clockwise and so forth. So we're just gonna raise the master slider, master slider here. All the motors will begin to spin. And then what I like to do is just take something like I just, like a piece of paper will be fine. I just grab this plastic prop bag and we're gonna touch each of the motors with it to see which way they push it. Clockwise, counterclockwise, counterclockwise. Clockwise, clockwise, back right. Oh yeah, clockwise. And yes, okay. So the motors are spinning. Each motor position is spinning the correct direction for that position in the diagram. And that's also important or the quadcopter won't fly. Well, okay, that brings us to the end of this video in the series. Now you've got your motor spinning the right way. You've got your motor spinning at all. And um, we're ready to, I think we'll set the receiver up in the next one. What do you think? Hmm? Click the link down below. There's a playlist. You can find all the parts in this series and you can follow along with this build with me. Until the end, we've got a cool iNav quadcopter flying with GPS and yeah. That's going to be neat. I don't, I've never actually really even owned one of those before. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.